one of the most common and most important UX paradigms that we see with generative AI applications is streaming. Oftentimes, the calls to the language models can take a while. And so having some response to the user that streams as it's coming out is really, really important to let them know that stuff is actually happening. This becomes even more important when you have chains and sequences and agents that, that take a, a bunch of calls, um, some of them to APIs, some of them to language models. And so being able to show that intermediate work, again, in a streaming manner is really, really important. So as we've built LangChain 0.1, um, we've really, really focused on making streaming a big component of it. A lot of that comes from LangChain Expression Language, which we covered in an earlier video. So LangChain Expression Language, when you create objects with it, it exposes a common interface. That interface has a few methods that are really, really important for streaming. So one is the stream method. This streams back tokens. Um, another is the async stream method. So if you want to use it in an async setting. And then a third is the async streaming of intermediate steps. So this is really useful for complex chains, agents, and, and bigger things that you guys are building. We've really focused on making sure that whatever chain, whatever DAG you create with LangChain Expression Language will have streaming at the end, including if you're doing things like parsing outputs into a specific format, which can be a little bit tricky. So there are a few different things that I want to show off. And so I've created a, a, a notebook to kind of walk through a few of them. So here's just basic streaming. So if we create a really simple chain that's just a prompt um, into a model, into an output parser, we can stream back responses um, using the stream method. Um, and we can see that it gets printed out. Another thing that we've focused on is streaming when you're doing things in parallel. Um, so here, uh, we can run two chains in parallel. One is telling a joke, one is writing a poem. It's about the same topic. So we'll create those individual chains and then we'll create this parallel chain that runs those in parallel. And we can stream back the response and we can see that we've got some tokens from poem, some tokens from joke, they're intermingled. Um, and so we, again, the, the parallelism happens uh, through LangChain Expression Language naturally, but then we're focused on making sure that the streaming experience, you can get back those results and do things with them. So here I have just a really simple um, logic that basically looks at what key is getting returned and builds up a dictionary. Um, so we can see that over time, um, we start to build up this dictionary of different, uh, uh, of, of poem and joke and the different responses that it has. And so if we wanted to display this in a UI somewhere, um, that would be really easy to do. The next thing that I want to highlight is the stream log method. So the stream log method is really useful when you want to return some of the intermediate steps. And this is really useful when you have intermediate steps that are interesting and potentially take uh, uh, a while or cause the chain to take a while. So an example of this is with RAG. So with RAG or retrieval augmented generation, you have a question, you then look up relevant documents, and then you pass those documents and the question into an LLM and get back a final response. And so here, it's often useful to stream the or, or return the intermediate steps, namely the uh, documents that you fetch so that you can show them to the user, so that you can show the user that some work is being done, all of that. So here we can create a really simple RAG method and we'll cover, we'll cover uh, retrieval augmented generation in another video, but here we'll create a really simple RAG where we have a retriever, we have a prompt, we then have this chain and this chain requires context and a question. And then we create this other chain that, that wraps this chain and it just adds in this context. So we'll create this uh, rag example. And first let's take a look at what streaming looks like. Um, so here we can do what is Langsmith and we can stream back a result. It takes a little bit. Um, and again, it takes a while to even get started. That's because there's this search call to the retriever that's happening. So if we want to see more of the information as it gets streamed back, we can use a stream log. So if we do this, we start getting back a lot of information. And so, and that's because it's logging all the steps that happen. And so some of these steps provide really valuable information. So here we have this uh, uh, docs. So here we call, we named this retriever docs. So we gave it a run name docs so that we could easily identify it. So we have this output and this is the documents that it's fetching um, from the search engine that we're using. 
So that's really handy, but there's also this other information that's not as handy. And so one thing that we can do is basically uh, use include names to filter things based on their name. So here, we only stream things back from docs or from final output. So docs will give us the immediate results. Um, and, and, and we get those because we specified it with include names. And we want those because those are the documents that we fetched. We always get the final output results. Um, and those we want because those are the tokens from the language model. Um, and, and we'll always get those with the path final output. There is a lot more resources on streaming with RAG in particular under the use case section. So if you go to QA with RAG, you'll notice uh, that we have uh, a few different um, a, f a few different sources for doing things like streaming sources, um, uh, adding chat history, which also involves some streaming bit, um, and other things like that. The last thing I want to highlight with streaming is around agents. So with agents. Um, there's the, a few complicating factors. First, agents, they call actions, and it's unknown how many actions they will call. They could call one. They could call zero. Maybe they'll call five. Um, and, and so that, that uh, places a lot more emphasis on the importance of knowing what those actions are. And oftentimes, agents take a while as well. So one thing that we've done is we've made it so that the thing that's returned by the agent executor, and, and we'll cover agents in a separate video. So if you don't understand the exact specifics of what I'm talking about, there'll be a separate video going into what an agent executor is. But basically, we've made it so that the agent executor, when you stream that, it returns the actions that are taken, not the tokens. And so let's take a look at what that looks like. So we can create a simple agent here. And then if we stream it, um, you can see that we get back first uh, this action, which is saying uh, call to Vili search results, JSON, what's the weather in San Francisco. Um, we then get back this result from the, the agent that has this step. This is the result from Tavili. We then call what's the weather in Los Angeles. We then get back the result of what's the weather in Los Angeles. And then we get back the final output. By the way, if we wanted to see what this looks like in Langsmith, we easily could. This is what it would look like. Um, you've got the call to the language model first. You can click on it. You can see that you get back this function call, um, whether in San Francisco. You can then see the result of this function call. You can then see the call to the LLM. It has this function call in it, but it realizes it may, needs to make another one. What's the weather in LA? So it calls that. Um, and then you can see the call to the language model at the end, um, and it generates a output um, down here. So. That's how you can stream back the intermediate results of an agent, which is really important so that you can show the user what steps are being taken. Um, you can also stream the tokens. Um, so here, um, what we can do is we can set streaming equals to true in the LLM. And so this is important. We have to do this. And then we can call a stream log in the agent executor. We can then filter to things that are OpenAI. And that's because this LLM is named OpenAI. And then we can start printing out the thing. So here we have the streamed output um, when it's first occurring. Um, and so here we can start to see that it's building up this function call um, thing. Um, so we can start to see that it's slowly building up the function call where we get to San Francisco weather in San Francisco. It's This is the query. So it's, so it's building up um, this function call. And then if we scroll to the end, um, we can see that it's streaming out the, the, um, the final response that it gives. So um, we can see here, it starts here. I'm sorry, but I couldn't find the current weather in San Francisco. So by using this a stream log method, um, we can get back the results of the to at, a, at a token level for agents. Um, and so you'll notice that it also combines, again, uh, the, uh, the, the search results as well. So we get back both. And so we have more information on this as well. So if you go to agents um, and uh, then in the how-to guides, we have streaming. Um, and so we cover this more heavily here. Streaming is a really important UX for a lot of LLM applications. We've put a lot of emphasis on making sure that LangChain is really, really good at streaming. Let us know if you run into any issues.